So this short presentation will show you how unicast reverse path forwarding works. URPF is a technique where the router can discard packets with invalid or fake or incorrect source addresses by a simple check against the forwarding table or the FIB. This is much more efficient than implementing ingress packet filters on the router itself. URPF is part of BCP38. BCP38 is one of the series produced by the IETF of best current practices and was published early in 2000. URPF is a very effective tool to assist with the defeating of denial of service attacks at source. It's implemented by network operators on their access devices where end users and end devices connect to the network infrastructure. There are two modes for URPF. The restrict mode, where the source address must be reachable via the source or incoming interface. And this is typically used in access networks. The other mode is known as loose mode. This is where the source address must be in the router's FIB. Typically, this is used to drop non-routed address space. And it can also be used when asymmetric traffic flows are present, for example, in multi-homing scenarios. Let's have a look at how this all works. The slide shows URPF strict mode. We have a router, we have an incoming interface, Fast Ethernet 00, and an outgoing interface, Gigabit 01. A packet comes in on the source interface, Fast Ethernet 00, with a source address 172.16.1.1. The router will have a look in the FIB to see how it reaches this source address. And if you look at the FIB entry, you see that the source address is reachable through Fast Ethernet 00. The router has a FIB entry for the 172.16.1.0 slash 24 network. Because the entry exists in the FIB and it is a valid source, the router will then forward the packet out of the gigabit 01 interface. However, if there's an incoming packet with source address 192.168.1.1, the router will check the FIB, and it sees that the source address of 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network is out through the gigabit 01 interface. So this destination is not reachable through the fast ethernet 00 interface, so this is considered a fake source address. The FIB entry does not match the incoming interface, and the packet is dropped. Now let's have a look at some configuration examples about how you would configure this using Cisco IOS. Each vendor will have a similar style of how unicast reverse path forwarding is configured. This example shown on the slide shows an Ethernet LAN with URPF configured. It is configured for IPv4 and for IPv6. The example shows a URPF configuration that will handle both a direct LAN and for another network connected to the LAN. The LAN in this example is configured with IPv4 address 192.168.0.254 24, and the v6 address 2001 db8 01 ff 64. We have configured IP verify unicast source reachable via Rx, which means the receive interface, for IPv4 and for IPv6. And we've configured the extra option allow self ping for IPv4. We will now look at what these features of the configuration mean. The router's IPv4 and IPv6 FIBs would look something like this. In V4, if I do show IP FIB, amongst all the entries, I will see two entries for the IPv4 subnets I've been using. 192.168.0.0/24 is attached and reachable through Fast Ethernet 01. 192.168.1.0/24 has next hop 192.168.01, .01, 
and again is reachable through fast Ethernet 01. For the V6 fib, we see that 2001db801-64 is attached to fast Ethernet 01, and the destination 2001db81-1-64 has next hop via the link local address shown and reachable through the fast Ethernet 01 interface. So when the RPF check is now implemented, incoming packets with source address 192.168.0.0/24 or source address from 192.168.1.0/24 will result in a valid RPF check and the packets will be forwarded. Likewise for IPv6, any packets coming from the subnet 2001db801-64 or 2001db81-1-64 will pass the RPF check and both be forwarded. If we look at the loose mode configuration, as shown in the slide, you will see that the configuration has changed slightly. The reachable via is now any. This means that the router will check the entire fib for the destination, meaning that we have a successful test so long as the subnet is somewhere in the router's fib. Cisco IOS allows various options. Just to summarize these, reachable via means strict mode, is available using the Rx keyword. Loose mode is available using the Any keyword. Allow self ping enables the operator to use ping on the local interface to check local link connectivity. Without self ping, it would not be possible to ping the local interface address from the router. In loose mode, the allow default option allows a successful match against the default route if this is required by the operator. And there are also access lists available to cover selective URPF checks. Let's have a look at some deployment advice now. Our advice would be to implement URPF on all single-homed customer-facing interfaces. This is much cheaper in terms of CPU and RAM than implementing packet filters on the router. And indeed, just make URPF a default setting in all access router templates, as many network operators have been doing for most of this century. In the case of multi-home connections, the deployment of URPF needs very careful planning, if it is implemented at all. Asymmetric traffic flows are common, and strict mode URPF would mean that at least the BGP wait feature would need to be implemented. Loose mode ensures URPF can be implemented, but again, we advise that care is needed when deploying this. There is the danger that packets could be dropped with any misconfiguration or misplanned implementation of URPF. Indeed, most operators will avoid using URPF in the situations of multi-homed customer connections. And to conclude, URPF has been available in major vendor implementations since the late 1990s. There's more documentation contained in BCP38 about defeating denial of service attacks by source address filtering. And you can read more in BCP38 in the URL on the screen. Implementation of URPF is an essential technique for assisting with defeating these denial of service attacks. And it is one of the principles in the current MANOS initiative. And you can read more about MANOS on the website shown on the screen.